in this class we shall discuss about the regenerative steam power cycle with closed type feed water heater. In the last class we have discussed about the regenerative steam power cycle and we have seen the use of feed water heater and that was open type feed water heater. So, today if we try to you know just recall exactly what we have discussed in the last class. So, we have again I am drawing the schematic diagram of the So, this is uh, the schematic depiction of the regenerative steam power cycle with open type feed water heater. What we have seen you know that uh, making use the, making use of this device which is essentially a heat exchanger in which two streams that is the you know extracted stream from the turbine is allowed to mix with the feed water which is coming from the you know condenser. So, the collected condenser would be pumped to this device wherein the extracted stream will be allowed to mix properly. Now, we have seen that as I have said just now that you know whether it is open type feed water heater or closed type feed water heater these devices are basically heat exchangers. So, you know that uh, uh, in this by making use of this we could establish that the efficiency of the cycle can be increased and we have discussed that if such a device can be increased or such a device can be uh, you know can be integrated. I mean more than one such device can be integrated with the circuit efficiency of the regenerative power cycle you know can be increased and efficiency would be closer to the Carnot cycle efficiency. But you know that uh, practical limitations are there because of the initial cost as well as the cost which is involved with the operation of this device. So, accounting for these difficulties the number of feed water heaters which is limited to 8 not more than that. So, today we shall discuss that instead of you know allowing two different streams. So, this is extracted stream and this is feed water. So, these two streams 
are mixing together in an open ambience. Open ambience means this is a closed device, but these two streams are directly mixing, there is no any interface. So, that is why the name open is coming. So, this is open space, two streams are coming and they are mixing directly with each other. Now, today we shall be discussing about the closed type feed water heater. And in this closed type feed water heater, the extracted stream will be allowed to pass over a circuit over a coil and feed water will be allowed to pass through the coil. So, this is essentially a cross flow type heat exchanger. So, let me draw it. Okay. So, I can draw the you know circuit here only. So, uh, rather I can go to draw over here you know this is boiler. this is turbine. Now, here we will be having one feed water heater and steam will be taken to this feed water heater, but so this is one pump, this pump is not required even let me erase it. So, if I draw the you know, so this is the coil through which this uh, feed water will be pumped and this is condenser. You can see that this pump is responsible to develop pressure so, the collected condensate will be pumped by this pump to the boiler pressure. Why? Because if we go back to the previous slide here, two streams are mixing together and definitely the stream, the stream which is extracted from the turbine is having different pressure than the pressure at which the feed water is you know supplied to this open feed water. Now, it is because of this reason the second pump was there, but in this case since the feed water will be allowed to pass through the coil and if we can design properly definitely we need to design properly that is the frictional losses and if we can select pump accordingly then this pump will be able to cater feed water even up to the boiler pressure. So, there is no need of having additional pump as of now. So, this is the turbine. Idea is so you can you can see this is a cross flow heat exchanger in which you know feed water is coming in this direction and which is needed to be heated by the steam which is extracted from the turbine. So, steam which is extracted from the turbine will be allowed to pass over this coil and during the process rather during this uh, uh, you know flow process heat exchange will take place and feed water will gain heat from the you know extracted stream and we can increase the temperature of feed water. So, you know that uh, when stream is allowed to pass over the coil 
it will lose heat and that heat will be gained by the feed water and what will happen? The steam will be condensed. So, this condensed steam will be you know again there are two ways if we need to supply that condensed steam to the feed water line then definitely we need to have an additional pump and that is why this additional pump will be required. So, this is P 2. you know. So, these are different points. So, you can understand the collected condensate will be pumped back to the feed water line and eventually we will be getting mixture at the inlet of the boiler. Okay. So, the feed water and the steam. So, basically steam water mixture will be pumped to the boiler and if I give the name. So, this is 1, this is 2, then we can give name this is 3, this is 4, this is so 3 to 4, this is 3 4, uh, say this is this is 4 and this is 4 prime and we can give name that is 3 prime. So, this is 3 prime. So, this is 3 prime, this is 5, 6 and 7. So, we have we have identified several state points. Now, few minutes back we have discussed that additional the requirement of additional pump is not there in the circuit, but now we can see this pump is required, but requirement of this pump can be eliminated if we use steam, steam strap. So, this is So, this is called steam trap. So, from the name itself you can understand this is again a device which will trap steam and will allow liquid to pass. So, the collected steam can be again you know cascaded back to the condenser using a throttle valve. So, that is what is if we can use this steam trap you can understand that the requirement of additional pump which is really you know uh, not advisable considering the cost associated with its operation as well as initial cost. So, this requirement of additional pump can be avoided if we use steam trap and this device will only trap the steam and will allow liquid to pass the you know steam which is collected can be cascaded back to the condenser using a throttle valve. So, this is the idea. So, this is what is the regenerative steam power cycle using a closed type feed water heater. Why it is closed type? You can understand two, mix, two different streams are not mixing directly together rather so, this is steam flow and this is feed water. While feed water is passing through the coil, steam is allowed to pass over the coil and during this process heat exchange you know that feed water temperature can be increased before it enters into the boiler and that is what 
uh, the import that is what is the objective of this particular cycle. So, somehow we are increasing the temperature of feed water and that temperature rise is not coming from the you know combustion that is that heat is not supplied into the boiler by burning you know fuel, but th this amount of heating is done by extracting steam from the turbine. And we have seen that you know uh, again I am repeating you may ask me a question because if we extract steam that means we are not allowing that steam to do work. Had we allowed that steam to work in the turbine we would have obtained more amount of work from the turbine, but we are not going to do that instead we are extracting steam to heat up the water rather to feed water. But you also need to keep in mind that if we allow that steam to work turbine then perhaps the amount of heat that must be rejected in the condenser will increase. So, from that point of view it is it is quite you know possible to increase the overall efficiency though we are sacrificing some somewhat amount of work by extracting steam from the turbine. So, next our objective should be to draw the T s diagram if we can draw the T s diagram that will help us to understand more about this uh, cycle. So, this is the T s diagram let us draw. You know that uh, we are trying to draw all the processes in T s plane from there we will come to know about the all the processes by which eventually the efficiency of the cycle is getting uh, increased. Okay. So, so, this is the boiler pressure right. So, this is boiler pressure and this is the condenser pressure. Okay. Now, so this is the amount of stream which is extracted from the turbine at an intermediate pressure. So, if we now draw the intermediate pressure, so this is the intermediate pressure. intermediate pressure. So, if we try to draw the say this is 0.5, this is 0.6 and this is 0.7 right. You can understand if the fraction of stream that is extracted from the turbine is m 1, then if 1 kg of steam is allowed to go to the turbine from the boiler and if we extract m 1 kg of steam from the turbine remaining 1 minus m 1 kg of steam will be allowed to exponent centrifugally and to go to uh, to go into the condenser. So, you know that uh, this is basically m 1 kg and this remaining 1 minus m 1 kg is. So, we have extracted m 1 kg of steam from the turbine remaining steam is again expanding isentropically up to the condenser pressure that is 6 to 7 and this m 1 kg of steam is extracted, but before that this amount of steam has done work on the rotating part of the turbine and by this steam has done work while expanding isentropically in the turbine that is 5 to 6. Okay. Now, you see that uh, 1 to 2 
again try to apply your common sense because pump cannot handle two phase mixture mostly it is liquid. So, the thermodynamic state at point 1 is saturated liquid. So, this is point 1 right. What about the pressure 2, 3 prime, 4 prime and 5? So, you understand this is not the open type, this is closed type. So, this pump is responsible to build up pressure and that is the pressure at which boiler is operating. So, P 2 equal to P 3 prime equal to P 4 prime equal to P 5. That means, 2, 3 prime and 4 prime all these state points will lie on the boiler pressure line. So, this is 2 okay. and let me complete this 1. Okay. What will be the position of 3, 3 prime, 4 and 4 prime? That is very important. That is very important, right. See 2 and 3 prime, you know that. Uh, so, 3 prime is 3 prime, 4 prime and 5 these points are on the same pressure line. So, this is say uh, 3 prime and what would be the 4 prime and 4? Question is will the entropy at 4 be higher than the entropy at 4 prime or vice versa that is very important. So, this is 3 now, what is point 3? So, the 3 is again this saturated liquid. So, pump is used to you know supply that condensate though this is two phase mixture, but you know that 3 is on the saturated liquid line. So, this is the 3. So, this point, this point is 3 prime and this point I am marking that is 3. So, I am using red color and this is 3. So, this red point is 3. This red point is 3 and 3 prime is on the other pressure line. So, you know this 3 pressure 3 prime is definitely higher than pressure 3 and that is why the requirement of requirement of additional pump into is coming into the picture. So, you know 3 and 3 prime, 3 prime is at the con you know the pressure at 3 prime is on the feed water line. So, pressure is the you know boiler pressure while the point 3 is on the saturated liquid line. So, the pressure is high. Now, what will be 4 prime or 4? Ideally, point 3 prime, 4 prime and 4 all these points should coincide, but if you apply your common sense you know that m 1 kg of steam is extracted from the turbine, it is now allowed to pass over the coil during the process it the st extracted steam releases heat and that heat is absorbed by the feed water. While the steam is collected at point 3 that is essentially condensed steam. So, temperature you know you have studied in heat transfer courses, in heat transfer course that it is very unlikely that the temperature of water. So, this is water is one stream which is which temperature should be increased by taking heat from another stream that is allowed to pass over the coil. So, it is very unlikely that the temperature at 3 prime should be equal to temperature at 3, but it can right. So, temperature at 3 is definitely higher than 3 prime, though 
I could not you know represent at per scale, but you should keep in mind temperature at 3 should be slightly higher than temperature at 3 prime, otherwise heat transfer will not be justified and that is what we have studied in heat transfer course. That is why now what I should do, I should erase this point and I will write this 3 prime is here. So, this is 3 prime. So, temperature at 3 prime should be slightly lesser than temperature at 3, otherwise you know efficient heat transfer will not be justified. So, next is what about 4? Now, entropy of entropy at 4 is rather should be slightly higher than the entropy at 3 prime and 4 prime, because temperature at 3 is high and that is again pumped. So, while we are pumping it is because of this viscous heating temperature will increase little more. So, you know entropy at state point 4 should be higher than the entropy at state point 3 prime and 4 prime and that is why you know uh, the 4 the point 4 prime uh, point 4 would be here. I am using uh, so this is 4 and if I use this is 4 prime. So, this is very important I hope you have understood. So, temperature at 3 prime is less than temperature at 3, entropy at 4 should be higher than entropy at 3 prime and 4 prime, though the points 3 prime, 4 prime and 4 should coincide, but theoretically they should not right. So, since the temperature at point 3 is high that condensed stream is again pumped. So, because of viscous heating temperature will increase little more and as a result of which entropy at 4 should be even higher than the entropy at 4 prime and that is what you can see from the T s plane. So, this is basically you know, uh, so this is 3, 3 to uh, 4. So, this is the case 3 to 4 that I have shown over here right. So, this is isentropic process 3 to 4 because that is again reversible adiabatic process pumping. So, uh, I should show here W in 2 and this is also W in 1 right. So, this is all about the description of the you know the uh, regenerative power cycle with closed type feed water heated. What you can see? You know again I am telling had this arrangement not been there in the circuit the temperature of feed water would have been T 2 before entering into the boiler, but it is because of this complex arrangement we could increase the temperature of feed water before it enters into the boiler up to 4 you can understand uh, 4 prime. So, it is it is because of this increase in temperature uh, which is which is temperature of the feed water average temperature of heat addition you know increases which in turn you know increases the efficiency of the cycle. Now, again one important issue will be there that what should be the fraction of steam that should be extracted. In the context of the open type feed water heater I have discussed that you know you have to keep in mind that the thermodynamic state at the inlet to pump 2 should be the saturated liquid. So, that was the key for the calculation of the fraction of steam that should be extracted. So, again if you would like to calculate the fraction of steam that must be extracted from the turbine essential in the context of this closed type feed water heater, we can again apply steady state steady flow equation to the you know uh, this closed type feed water heater and then we can easily calculate. So, let me write over here that is, so this is closed type feed water heater right. 
closed feed water heater. What we can do? We can easily calculate this fraction of steam by applying steady state steady flow equation to the processes which are there in the uh, closed type feed water heater. By how? You can calculate you know. So, by applying steady state steady flow equation to the closed type feed water heater, what we can write? m 1 into h 6 m 1 into not h 6 m 1 into h 6 minus h 3 to be precise. So, we can write why I am writing h 6 minus h 3 because this is not getting mixed directly right. So, still the condensed steam which is collected at state point 3 is having high temperature. So, high enthalpy. So, m 6 m 1 into h 6 minus h 3 is equal to 1 minus m 1 will be equal to 1 minus m 1 into h, h 3 prime minus h 2. h 3 prime minus h 2. Okay. So, what, what should be the expression of m 1? So, let me write in the next slide. So, this basically the feed water which is 1 minus m 1 kg entropy of the feed water increases enthalpy of the feed water increases from 2 to 3 prime and that is the increase in enthalpy. So, ideally you know that this is basically heat balance. So, the gain in enthalpy by the feed water is equal to the you know enthalpy loss of the extracted steam. So, if we try to write m 1 into h 6 minus h 3 equal to 1 minus m 1 into h 3 minus h 2 m h 6 minus h 3 plus h 3 prime minus h 2 equal to h 3 prime minus h 2. So, this is the expression m 1 equal to h 3 prime minus h 2 divided by h 6 minus h 3 plus h 3 minus h 2. So, this is the fraction of steam, this is the expression of the fraction of steam extracted from the turbine. So, this is the important part. I am not going to write the expression of q in w out, w in 2, w in 1 and q out, because you can apply again by you can calculate again all these expressions by applying steady state steady flow equation to boiler turbine to the process which is there in the boiler turbine condenser and these two pumps. So, this is P 1. Okay. So, this is P 1. Now, you know we have discussed about uh, several issues related to these uh, several cycles starting from the Carnot cycle that is the you know ideal cycle. We have discuss about the you know limitations of the Carnot cycle, then simple ideal Rankine cycle, Rankine cycle with you know several modifications and then we have discussed about the regenerative Rankine cycle. And we have seen that by making use of this regenerative principle, it is possible to increase the efficiency of the cycle which is I mean which would be almost 
the Carnot cycle efficiency. It is not so easy to achieve the efficiency which would be as good as the Carnot efficiency, but uh, of course, it can be uh, increased closer to that of the Carnot efficiency. So, we have so far discussed about the cycle and we have seen that the working substance of the cycle is water and steam water mixture to be precise. So, now we shall briefly discuss about the ideal working fluid. So, if we write the ideal working fluid. You know that uh, water is predominantly used as the working fluid in the vapor power cycle, though it is not an ideal fluid. Why? Because water is having a few drawbacks to be used as the ideal fluid, but uh, you know that uh, the concept of another cycle that is known as binary cycle will be an attempt to overcome those shortcomings of water and make water as an ideal fluid. So, though water is not an ideal fluid, but you know it is predominantly used. Considering this, at least now time has come to understand the important characteristic characteristics of the working fluid for the consideration as the ideal fluid. So, I will be writing here that important of the working fluid to be for the consideration of uh, for the consideration as the ideal fluid. So, let me repeat again, we have seen as of now water is used as the working fluid for all the cycles we have discussed till now, but you know though it is used predominantly, but uh, water cannot be you know considered as an ideal fluid because water has a few drawbacks. But as I told you, the concept of binary cycle would be an attempt to overcome those shortcomings, so that water can be considered as the ideal uh, fluid for the vapor power cycle. Before going to that particular cycle that we will discuss in the next class or next to next class, let us briefly discuss about the important characteristics of the working fluid for the consideration as the ideal fluid. What are those? Number one is high critical temperature. So, what is critical temperature? Uh, you have studied in thermodynamics. Now, question is if the critical temperature is above the metallurgically allowed temperature, maximum temperature to be precise, then isothermal heat transfer is possible at the maximum temperature, because you know that uh, uh, we have seen that uh, you know from the cycles that when heat is supplied in the boiler for the conversion of 
water into the stream, the low temperature heat addition is not you know uh, what I am telling what I would like to say is, is not desirable one, because it lowers the average temperature at which it is added. So, if I now come to the Carnot cycle you have seen that if we can increase the temperature at which it is added that is again you know heat transfer uh, I know isothermal heat transfer when fluid changes the phase. So, question is I mean if we can increase the critical temperature. So, basically if the critical temperature of the fluid is higher than the metallurgically allowed maximum temperature, because uh, we cannot increase the temperature inside any device otherwise the device the material the material which is used to fabricate the device will start melt melt melting. So, if the temperature if the critical temperature is above the metallurgically allowed maximum temperature then isothermal heat transfer is possible at the maximum temperature as the fluid changes its phase. So, this is very important you have seen that if the critical temperature is very high and if, if it if we can have heat transfer isothermal heat transfer at the maximum temperature then we can closely uh, reach at the Carnot cycle towards the Carnot cycle. But at the same time we have to keep in mind that may be the working substance will be having high critical temperature, but the saturation temp pressure should not be very high that is very important. So, here should not have high saturation pressure at the critical temperature. Right? So, this is number 1. Number 2 is low melting point temperature. Right? So, low triple point temperature. So, low triple point temperature. If triple point temperature, low triple point temperature, if the triple point temperature is low than below the cooling medium, then solidification can be avoided, right. So, if the triple point temperature becomes below the cooling medium temperature rather below the temperature of the cooling medium the problem associated with solidification can be prevented. Let me tell you again once again let me tell you once again you know that uh, uh, we uh, need to uh, reject heat in the condenser in which cooling water is circulated and as I have discussed all the condensers are operated at a pressure which is less than atmospheric pressure if we can reduce the condenser pressure perhaps we can take we can allow steam to expand even more in the turbine. But the problem is if the condenser pressure is well below the atmospheric pressure air leakage will be there and in addition to that you know that uh, that pressure at which condenser will be operated depends on the temperature of water which is available in the site. So, if we can have one working fluid whose triple point temperature is even you know uh, less than the temperature of the cooling medium then solidification problem can be avoided. Otherwise, what will happen you know it will start solidifying. So, that is number 2. Number 3 is which is very important that is low condenser pressure. right so this is the uh, low condenser pressure is not permissible so low condenser pressure is not permissible that is what i have discussed just now that it will it will you know create another problem of having air leakage into the condenser if that is there then we need to have again deaeration that is nothing but the removal of air from the feed water otherwise it will start 
corrosion in the boiler tube. And number 4 which is very important that is high enthalpy of vaporization. high enthalpy of vaporization that is HFG then isothermal heat transfer to the working fluid is possible. So, I am writing over here this is very important that isothermal heat transfer to the working fluid is possible, right. And finally, I would like to write another important point that is 5, you know the working fluid should have good heat transfer characteristics, non toxic, non corrosive, inexpensive, readily available. So, 5 I am writing good heat transfer characteristic, you know. And six is uh, non corrosive, inexpensive, right, readily available, and then and then is you know non toxic. I am not going to discuss about point points 5 and 6, you know that good heat transfer characteristics that is heat transfer coefficient should be you know high, so that it can carry maximum amount of heat, because essentially what we have dis what we have understood from the discussion we have till now, heat is added in one part of the cycle and in other part heat is rejected and by this course of heat addition and heat rejection we are getting work output. So, the high temperature part of the cycle wherein heat is added to the working fluid. So, we should have I mean that the working fluid should have high heat transfer characteristic or good heat transfer characteristics. The last point that is quite you know common you have studied in the context of heat exchanger which fluid is used it should not be corrosive it will be available you know readily inex inexpensive and non toxic, because you know this is this, this working fluid is allowed to pass through the coils tubes in the boiler. So, if these properties are not you know there with the working fluid which is which should be chosen and then uh, operation uh, I think it will it will again uh, invite cost associated with the regular maintenance of the uh, maintenance of different parts of the uh, steam power plant. So, you know that uh, if you would like to summarize today's discussion starting from this open type feed water heater which we have discussed in the last class just to make uh, a comparison between these two. So, open type feed water heater is relatively simple in design does not involve complex design, since it does not involve with the complex design of the circuit feed water circuit I mean close type feed water uh, open type feed water heat, heating circuit the maintenance maintenance cost is also less. Only one problem is that in this circuit the requirement of pump 2 is must, but if we go to the close type feed water circuit it is complex maintenance as well as the initial cost of for this circuit is relatively high 
rather higher than the open type feed water circuit, but this circuit I mean we can remove this particular pump, this pump is not essential for this circuit instead we need to use steam trap. So, these are the basic comparison between the open type feed water and closed type feed water circuits in the context of the regenerative steam power cycle. And finally, we have discussed about the uh, important characteristics of the ideal working fluid which is commonly used in the steam power cycle. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class uh, and we will discuss about the binary cycle. Thank you.